live down here. My dad's a farmer and my mom was had an antique shop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I live in Hare Lake. I live in the corner of Hare Lake and Beavers. Okay. Have a seat. We're going to get started in about two minutes, six o'clock. Since you're here, man, you can eat mine. Okay. <laughs> oh, I got this. Yeah. Well, this one got called pretty quick, so. <laughs> Do what? No. We got plenty of seats. Yep. We know how to spread seats around. This is not going to be much fun, no way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> have to get your own seat. <laughs> huh?
All right, good evening, everyone. It's 6 o'clock, my, my clock on my phone, so we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Eddie Willingham. I'm uh, chairman of the Chattanooga County Planning Commission. Uh, and we call this special meeting tonight really just to uh, take care of some administrative issues, but uh, uh, we're going to do that tonight, and uh, uh, hopefully this will be, some, be something that will be a, a positive for everybody in the room, uh, and y'all will look forward to some things upcoming. Let's uh, do roll, roll call. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, a new member to the board. Uh, as y'all know, Aaron Reed was one of the original members, and he had to uh, step down based on some conflicts. Him being in the construction industry, he felt like he would be working on projects that might be involved in this, and he just felt like it'd be better if he stepped aside from this. <clears throat> All right. So he has been replaced by Lee Hamby. This is Lee right here. Uh, the bio I've got on Lee is he's a lifelong resident of Chattooga County. He and his wife Susan live in the Chelsea community on his grandparents' family farm. They have one son, Callan. He is a member of Menlo Methodist Church. Is that Callan's a member or are you? Uh, we are. Oh, we'll, when we show up. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're, they're members of Menlo Methodist Church. Uh, and Lee is also a graduate of Chattooga High School. He is owner broker of Southern Group Realty in Georgia. He is also a licensed real estate agent in Georgia and Alabama and is the 2022 broker representative for Greater Rome Board of Realtors. So welcome aboard, Lee. We appreciate you, Thank you. coming on board with us. All right. uh, that, that was one purpose for the meeting is to introduce our, our new board member. Uh, secondly, uh, I uh, was in contact and had some discussions with Blake and then some discussions with our county attorney uh, about all of the, the questions and, and concerns that have arisen since Blake adopted this ordinance. Uh, and I asked the uh, county attorney who's much better at the English language than I am to write us up a resolution uh, that I've passed out to our board and left for them to review. Uh, and then uh, we'll discuss that here as a board tonight uh, and then, then move forward uh, in whatever direction the board sees fit. But this time I will read uh, that resolution out loud. <clears throat> County of Chattooga, State of Georgia, resolution of the Chattooga County Planning Commission. Whereas the Chatto Chattooga County Planning Commission was created by enactment of the Chattooga County Land Development Ordinance, and whereas the undersigned members of the Planning Commission have duly appointed, have been duly appointed by the Commissioner of Chattooga County, Georgia, and whereas the undersigned Planning Commission members met in a specially called meeting and pursuant to proper notice, and the unders undersigned constituting a quorum of said commission, and whereas the undersigned have concluded that the development and the implementation of a land development ordinance is needed and whereas concerns have been raised concerning the exi existing ordinance, and whereas the Planning Commission is de desirous of proposing amendments of the ordinance to the Commissioner of Chattooga County, Georgia, and whereas the Commission desires adequate time and consideration before recommending any amendments, and whereas the Commission further desires to receive public input concerning proposed amendments, now therefore be it resolved by the undersigned commission members that it hereby recommends that the commissioner of Chattooga County, Georgia, suspend Article 2 of the ordinance and thus prohibit enforcement of the same until 11.59 on December 31st, 2022. During such time as enforcement of ordinance is suspended, the commission will work to revise and edit the land development ordinance and shall seek public input on said revisions and will present a proposal to the commission for his consideration. It is further resolved that the chairman of this commission shall deliver a copy of this resolution to the commissioner. So resolve this such and such date of September 2022. So that, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, first of all, from the board, any questions or comments concerning anything in this resolution? Well, I'll say I, just, I think it's a good idea to give people time to, to right. do that. It is. Uh, so that's, that's the penalties. The, the penalties, yeah, the, the enforcement of it, yeah, right. Yeah, that might, so. Since it doesn't say penalties yes, for, for the group that. here, the article that's being set aside is the penalties article. Mm -hmm. in, in the ordinance that's out there, with the intention that for the next three months we get input from the county. We've already, we collected a lot of good ideas at the last planning meeting that we had here. And we've got those drafted, but then as we watch the reaction of the county, you know, 
folks' concerns, a lot of questions. We had a lot of questions, too. <laughs> so what we want to do is make a conscientious effort at trying to get this thing boiled down into something that works. Because what we're here to do, we're all volunteers, mm -hmm. What we're here to do is make sure the communities, wherever development occurs, that the communities there get to talk about it, get to say, yeah, I'm concerned about this or I'm concerned about that. But we've all been able to practice for the last few weeks getting a lot of questions. And uh, sorry, I'm kind of oh, stepping oh, in. Oh, you go right ahead, Greg. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> a lot of the questions we've heard have been the same kind of questions we've had. But the, the underlying reason for this ordinance is we want our communities to be able to have a say in what kind of development occurs in the unincorporated part of this county. And that wasn't happening. We were having a lot of things happen in this county over the past three years that got real close to my home. And a lot of, some folks may not know about that, but we don't need that type of loose cannon development stuff around here. Well, how loose cannon was it? It was in the front page of the paper. Uh, the Lakes of Somerville development, yeah, which yeah. wasn't le which wasn't legitimate. Is that, is that part of what we're doing here? For the past, no, You're not, not at all, not at all. Okay. I got a lot of friends that are black, and that, I that's. I do too. <laughs> Look, there were people that had been pulled into what appears to be. Uh, a, a development scam. But it I, was a scam, correct? I, I don't know that for a fact. I'm not close enough to it. Well, I but, you, but you knew enough about it that you could be able to tell other people what they should do with their land because what was going on at your house. No, no. Well, that's what you a Andy, I think <laughs> we didn't have any way, we didn't have... What we're working on is a way to allow the communities to be able to filter whatever kind of development's coming. And this is really focused on subdivision development and commercial development. Okay, and we got out of the last meeting, there were a lot of exceptions, and y'all stop me or correct me if I say anything that doesn't make any sense. I feel like when this ordinance came about, it was largely because for three years, the Taloga community and actually part of the Lyrely community was just struggling against what was taking place that didn't make a whole lot of sense. And so an ordinance needed to come about. Now, Blake found this mechanism to put into the, into the community. And I was thankful he found a way because for years we've been worried about how do we control and it's not so much, it, look, I'm a farmer. I got a farm that I've had for 30 years, 33 years. Okay? This is where we've raised our family and our grandkids. I just don't want craziness going on in this county. That's what we're talking about. You have these meetings all the time with people where they get in here. And, uh, I found out about I just, you said give people adequate time to come to meetings. Simply the purpose of this meeting is to schedule meetings that everybody can come to. We're not here to discuss the ordinance, changes to the ordinance. Nobody's prepared for that tonight. But we're going to schedule three meetings tonight that will be two, four, six, eight weeks out. So everybody will know and have plenty of time to come to. Does that satisfy what you just, question you just rose? Great. Well, that's that's just what I read in here in, in this in, in this resolution. That that's what we want to do. I honestly didn't know how many people was going to be here. It doesn't matter. You can still have caucus. We prepared 
How many people in here has got a smartphone? Raise your hand. All right. What I do when I want to copy something, I'll come up here and take a picture after it, and I've got it in my phone from now on. I'll be glad to let you do that after the meeting. But, you know, there's no, you know, I can't be prepared to give one, 15, or 100 people. So. Huh? Sir, there's not a copy machine here. I'd, I'd be glad to make copies, but. And there are already tax payable. I mean, our taxes is paid for. You ought to be able to take care of every piece of paper we need. We're chasing a rabbit that's not helping nobody about having a copy of this. Anybody wants a copy of it, have it, they can go to the commissioner's office and get it, folks. And be real honest about it. Yeah. I, I don't listen to the radio or anything. I didn't even know you was talking about the ordinance, what ordinance. Right. You know, I, don't, I don't even know what the ordinance you're talking about. I just read it right here. The Chattooga County Land Development Ordinance. Huh? The, the notice in the paper said the Chattooga County Planning Commission, that's the only ordinance we deal with. How many people it, get on 435 in the afternoon, pick up the paper, and you've got to meet at 6 o'clock? Sir, I'm leaving here and I'm going to Lowe's to pick up material for my job tomorrow. I, I, I'm taking my time too. Right. And I'm out here coming in from two or three hundred miles away. Uh, be lucky to get through that course in time to be here for the part of the truck. Well, and you, you may you may have missed the the re this. We're not really here to do anything other than to let the community know there's going to be three more meetings this year, once a month, right? Because in the, we, not we, too distant future, yeah. We want to have working sessions so that so that the community can if. Sure, the ordinance is, it's confusing. It was to us too. And we're trying to get it cleaned up. We, the timing has probably been sloppy. I think we'll admit that. I personally felt like we had to have something because I've been fighting a battle. You can talk to most of the people in Taloga that were close to what was going on that there was no way to actually have any say in. It's not. It's not zoning. No, it's yeah, not. It is. You can't, you can't go around that. It's zoning. It is not zoning. Ti time out. Time out. I'm just going to suspend the meeting before you start arguing. From this point on, raise your hand, and when I recognize you, you can speak. Okay? We're getting out of hand. We're getting out of hand. I'm going to repeat myself again. The purpose of this meeting, and the only purpose of this meeting tonight, is to adopt a resolution to schedule you three meetings that the public can attend and have full input into changes that I can see in this ordinance. We're not here tonight to make any proposed changes in this ordinance. I'm not going to hear any from the floor. And I, what I highly recommend is that when you come to one of these other meetings is that you bring those in writing so I can take them home with me. Mr. Moses, you was here. Raise your hand up first. I'm just, I'm just asking this clarification. Now, when you read that, it was my understanding that the next meetings can only deal with no, we're asking to okay. suspend Article Two. We're going to take, we're going to discuss the entire ordinance, any any issue in the ordinance anybody has exception to, and any recommend recommended changes to that, amendments to it, additions, subtractions, clarifications, corrections. That includes definitions. That includes adding a table of contents. Whatever we need to do to make it a better ordinance for the general public as a whole for Chattooga County. You had your hand up. Yeah. Do you have any information tonight about the process where the public can make suggestions and, and possible changes to this uh, document? Is yes. it going to be by email? I mean, is there any idea of how you input suggestions for the modification as stated in the resolution? Like I j just mentioned in my previous statement, I would prefer them in writing. Because, yeah. you know, we're not going to have a court reporter here to take notes on everything that's said. Uh, we said at our last meeting, any suggestions, any comments, questions you've got, address them to BJ. He's the, he's the staff member. He's the paid man that's, that's got plenty of time during the day because he has nothing else to do. Yeah, <laughs> see, I, I just moved here. So I don't okay. know right. where to find information and stuff about this. So. Chattooga County's website. Okay. 
You'll have his contact information. It's chickencounty.org. Yeah. Okay. Back corner back here. You had your hand up for a while. So this isn't set in stone yet? What's that? The ordinance. The ordinance has been set in stone since when it was adopted in March, yeah. What we're doing, what I read, is we're asking the commissioner to suspend the enforcement of it until January the 1st or midnight on December 31st. Okay. The ordinance is still in effect because that's what creates the planning commission that gives us the authority to have these meetings and make suggestions and changes and recommendations to the commissioner. Yes, sir. I've got you next. When can we get a copy of this ordinance? It's available online at stewcounty.org in its entirety. So we the, just pull it up. Yes, sir. Pull it up on the internet. So my next question is why? Why what? Why were we not told anything about ordinance until it just pops up? I, I, I think there were several articles in the paper on the radio. I think there was notice notices given that, that the uh, commission was going to adopt the ordinance. He held public meetings. People just didn't see him because, honestly, at the end, it must not have been an issue to people. Now that it's been adopted, it's became an issue. People are talking about it, so more people are aware of it. So now we're going. That's why at this point, people are aware of it. We're going to have these meetings where there's plenty of public here. I'm expecting 100, 150 people to these meetings. There may be more. I don't know, but maybe we can get them all in this room. Uh, they're going to be limited to the number we can allow in here because we only got the one exit uh, due to fire marshal rules. No, we got another one. I'm sorry. Didn't look over my shoulder. But yes, sir. I'm sorry. Did I answer your question? Okay, yeah. So what you said a while ago about writing mm -hmm. down what you want to bring up at the meeting? Yes, sir. As such? I would prefer that, yeah. Why do you have an eddy? And uh, it turn it in to somebody, and if the board doesn't like it, then Ralph or whoever wrote it, he ain't going to get to get up and tell us because you don't want to answer that question. No, we, wait, we're... Wait a minute. That's the way it came out to me, what you said. You want it where you can decide if you want to hear it or not, if you want to uh, bring it up to the public. That's not the way it works. Okay, let me clarify that. We're going to have a public meeting, open discussion. Anybody that's here that, that gets the floor can say anything they want to, as long as it's legal. Okay? But I, no, I'm not trying to limit anything. We're here to try to give the public an ample opportunity to have input on this thing. I'm not trying to ramrod nothing down. This should have been done before we signed it in. Uh, before we signed That's one thing we can't do is go back in time. But moving forward, we can change things. You can change something. Uh, that's, that's what we're here for, sir. That's what we're here for. Well, if Ralph turns in something to you, uh, let Ralph speak. Sure. Right. Anybody that wants to speak is going to have the opportunity to speak as long as we got time. The submission process is mainly just to get it on paper so that when we do add it into the situation, we know exactly what that person asked us to do. Yeah. Other than it's just going word of mouth, because otherwise Ralph's going to get up, say a bunch of stuff, we're going to have discussions about it, and some of that stuff may or may not fall to the wayside during that discussion because one thing could be more important than the other. Putting it in paper means it makes it has a process of us seeing exactly what Ralph wants and making sure that we all can discuss it with the public, making sure that that resolution can be developed and we can put it into the thing. Okay, I'm just bringing up the point that Ralph doesn't have to be shoved off over here in the corner. No, Ralph is not going to be shoved off. <laughs> Ralph can uh, get with me any time between 8.30 and 5, Monday through Friday. Um, I can give you my card after this meeting if anybody would like it. You can hit me up and let me know what you'd like. I can give you my email address, you can write me whatever you'd like, uh, or you can bring it to the meetings because we we're going to have an open forum for people to speak. So we just, we just ask that you have it organized so we don't discuss a bunch of other things that we don't need to discuss in order so you, you can get what you want out of like the communication process. So when you stand up, if we've already submitted it to me, we know Ralph stand it up because he wants X, Y, and Z. Cool. And then he gets up and speaks. And we can, we can comprehend what Ralph wants truly, just like you're having a hard time comprehending this situation. If it was in writing, we would all be on the same page. Any other questions from the audience? Ralph ain't the bathroom. I'm sorry I had to say that. Is <laughs> <laughs> there a question in the back? Yes, ma'am.
if it is if it's a commercial if it's a commercial business and you're opening it within the incorporated areas the or thing you would you would pay I mean you would bring the plans and if you needed a variance or you had to have a variance or there was some reason in that case you would submit it just like Ralph would in writing to me and then we would see that we would see that and see either grant a variance or not depending on the circumstances of the situation um, right now as he said we're trying to fill it out more so in that case any suggestion you may have we get more of those suggestions from other people who are also in your position to open up a business then that may become a resolution on its own just out of pure continuum the, and I think that's a very good example of some, some things that need to be cleaned up in here to clarify what's going to be considered a commercial enterprise Right now, it's kind of open. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and make an art business. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Who's over here? Yes, sir. It sounds like to me that y'all going to be a little dictator at your county. This board is and, and Mr. I'm sorry you feel that way, sir. That's what it sounds to me right. like. Everybody's got to go through y'all about the stuff like that. We don't need this in this county. It needs to be stopped right now. This is a good time to stop it. That's all I got to say. Yes, sir. What about the existing businesses? Right? Any, any, We've got a business in our farm where we sell cons and we sell meat out of the building. What is that going to entail for us that's already got existing businesses? Any enterprise or development or anything that was in existence prior to the adoption of this in March? is considered what everybody calls grandfathering in, an existing non-conforming use is the actual terminology for that. It, an existing non-conforming use is, is the official, but it's called grandfathered in, is kind of the general term everybody's used to. I can understand the grandfather right. part. Which, to clarify that, that means you can continue to operate in the manner that you are now, but you can't expand, alter, or change that business in any significant manner. I mean, you know, you might change product you sell inside the building, but as long as you don't double the size of your building or things like that, Speaking in general terms, then yeah, you can continue to operate as you're operating. That's my understanding. Yes, sir. It sounds like we're going to be hood in the county. Is what it sounds well, like. Certainly, we hope so. we don't. We hope not. That's not our intentions or our plans. Any other comments? I, I would like to move on to scheduling our meetings. What we came here for. Can I make some input on the scheduling of the meetings? Sure. If we're going to have three meetings and they're going to be working sessions, this is a huge document. I think we should divide it up in logical sections to cover at each meeting. Okay. Not to say we can't address the topics from the audience and right. public, but that way we can kind of stay on task and maybe get through it because it's 87 pages. Right, right. Okay. Well, and uh, on that topic, just FYI, we, we built a table of contents. Frankly, we had difficulty with the document because it's, it's big. And, and it, once you kind of organize it and can see what the sections are talking about, it tends to help. So we've got that on the list to try to help boil it down and make it a little bit easier to follow. And maybe breaking it up does make a, some sense. But now, these next three months is when if anybody's got any issue, big question that needs to be clarified, having it available, that's what we're doing. We've already got a pretty long laundry list of amendments from the first meeting, that meeting that we had last month sometime. And it was great input. You gave us some great ideas, Andy. <laughs> you did. <laughs> okay. I, I want to ask you something. Yes, sir. My understanding as the ordinance stands today, yes. But hopefully by the time watermelons come in next season, that'll be changed. Does that answer your question? Well, I, mean, I say that ain't changed. What would I have to do? Do I have to build a bigger culvert, uh, a bigger driveway, where I just have a stand for people to pull it off the road when they're going home or whatever, and want to buy a watermelon or a cantaloupe? What, what's it, that telling me I got to do? 
that. any commercial development you did, you'd have to comply with the ordinance. And I mean, I can't specifically say what everything is required for a watermelon stand, but. I, I don't know any of the information on the ordinance because right. I've not read or heard anything. Other right. than and and as I as I hear what you're describing, that's the exact same kind of stuff that I would be doing. And frankly, I think it would need to be either a variance or a carve out because that this county is not to the level of development where that type of thing has to be fly specked. Regulated, yeah. It, it what we're really concerned about is multi-unit subdivisions and commercial where you're talking about needing parking area and lighting and safety for entrance and egress to the streets it's that kind of thing we were actually starting to have some traffic issues out on 337 with the promotional stuff out of that stuff that was coming out of atlanta that wasn't legitimate so this this planning commission is here to not step on what you're describing it's just to make sure we don't have people coming into this county. We got a lot of absentee owners in this county, people that have not lived in this county for decades that might need to sell their property. And frankly, a lot of them aren't real selective about who they're selling it to. We just got to watch out for our county. If you know what, that's the first place we tried to go. Couldn't, couldn't manage to make this seller in Atlanta see how reasonable our offer was. Mr. Mo. Just a question here, and this not knocking anybody, but most of the times when you uh, write something or do something, uh, you have some basic, you look at somebody else's plan, you know, because you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I'm just asking this, have the people, uh, whatever group we got this from, did we ever study to see what how long they've had this in place and what problems they've had uh, with this because it, it kind of seems like to me and I'm, I'm not knocking the group up here I'm just saying studies should have been done and all the input before we sign this document is what I'm saying basically we got the cart before the horse yeah but we're gonna go back and get the horse that's what our plan is moving forward okay Yes, sir. I can about say that it sounds almost like a copy of what's happening in Gordon County. Gordon County is getting to the point where they don't tell you how many livestock you can have on a certain piece of property. Whether you have, you can only have 10 sheep or five goats or whatever, but it's going to be smaller, smaller amounts of land. If the man's got 10 acres, he ain't going to be able to have it about five or six sheep if they want. And that's what it's about to come to. And one other thing. This highway right here is the busiest highway in the world. A lot of people, truckers especially, they don't want to go through Chattanooga because it's a mess. It's worse, Chattanooga's worse to get through than Atlanta most of the time. Right. They'll cut off at 140, come over here at 27 and get this road and go up across the mountain and on across 40 over in Alabama just to hit 72 and go west or hit 59 and go on north to 24. Mm -hmm. That's why all them trucks come up through here. That CB just tells everybody to come on. I, I've done it in the past. I'd be up there on 24 trying to get home. FedEx man, oh my, there's you know that bridge there just the other side of 59 on 24, be backed up to whoever, you know. Okay. So just follow me. My man, he said, just take me a half hour. I said, I'm stopping at Somerville, just going down that way. He didn't want to get off route because FedEx figures they need to stay on route. But he said, I don't remember this. Just pay attention to these trucks and cars come through here. Something needs to be done with this road. Well, I think that's been in the plans for, for years with the bypasses. Hopefully that'll help alleviate some of that. Let's get back to our, our point of business. I've had, I'd like to have, go have some supper. We've got three meetings we're going to schedule. All right. We already got one scheduled October 13th. It's been announced for weeks now. Uh, is an upcoming meeting. Uh, I'll take some input from the audience. Some of you mentioned six o'clock's not a good time. Uh, do, do we want to do it some other time besides Thursday at six o'clock? Do we want to do a Tuesday at seven? I'm open. I'm a single man. I can come. I can come at two o'clock in the morning if you want to. But. I think October fourth at seven p.m. right here would be a pretty good time. October the fourth. October the fourth. I think somebody else has already called a meeting for that time. <laughs> I'd, 
Right, right. Yeah, the days are getting shorter every day. Yes, ma'am, they sure are. The October meeting that's planned, there is a conflict with Ainsley about that. Yeah. We, you mentioned next week. You got fall break for trying next week and two of the week after that. A lot of counties going to be in Panama City Beach because that's where they go on fall break. Because the hurricane missed it. Uh, so we may extend that first meeting another week to give, pl give people plenty of notice to be here. Because I've already been reminded tonight that short notice is not helpful. So to October folks. what? Right, right now, we've got a meeting scheduled October 13th, but uh, one of our members brought up possibly changing that date. Well, I can go in and tell you the week after that, it's not going to do for a lot of us, because we'll be at the Farm Expo on the next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yes. And that's in South Georgia. Yeah. And that's the 19th, 20th, and 21st? Yeah. Moultrie. Moultrie. Yeah. Do the meetings have to be Monday through Friday? Not necessarily. I'm not going to do it on Sunday because I'm going to church. I don't do it without me. Why do you not like being invited to Sunday meetings? Well, I didn't say I didn't like being invited to it, but the board just can't come there. We can't ha if we can't have a quorum there and conduct business unless we duly announce that meeting. Right. If you really want to know what's going on with people, be at that meeting and set the hour. Any two of them can be there. That's not a voting for. That's right. So we need to set up a date. Let's let's figure it. We're here. Let's set up a date. And there so again, since we can't since we can't do the nineteenth, twenty twentieth, and twenty first, we're still keeping it on the Thursday. How's the following week of October? Because we would like to have it in October. But if you guys want to do it in the weekend, we can do that. And the reason we pick six is so that people could get off work and come here. Well, it would be better for me. Because I drive a truck, so it's going to be better for me to get in here at 7 o'clock. I'm just going to be straight with you. Okay. But I understand there are some of us that want to vote with don't like being out and I respect that. But if I need to, I'll come get her and we'll, I'll drive. That's why, I, that's why I feel personally, you know, a variety of times is going to work better. You know, you, you, every, we want everybody to have opportunity. Everybody don't have to be at every meeting. You know, everybody don't want to be at every meeting. But... If we have three meetings at different times and different days, hopefully that'll give as many people as possible can get a chance to come. So any suggestions other than seven o'clock for sure? I mean like the seven o'clock. Is it any day of the week, sir? Seven o'clock is okay or I wouldn't do I would do a Wednesday night at seven o'clock, but you won't be in some Okay. Well yeah. I mean well Wednesday and Sunday being out of the voting. Any of the other days of the week seem okay with anybody else? I'm good with any other day of the week. Okay. Well, my, my recommendation is that we just keep the October 13th date, even though we're not going to have two people here. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to really be conducted, adopting anything, voting on anything. We'll still have a quorum here, most likely. Yeah. Uh, because this already been advertised, that's just going to get confusing well, that's if, true. if we change that date. So okay. my recommendation is we keep October 13th at 6 o'clock as it's been advertised and then look for two more dates and times that have some variety to it that'll help out. So November and December. Does anybody have any suggestions for November? What about the last week of October, the 24th through the 28th? That, yeah. We got that. I'm out of time that week. Uh, the last week of October, you said the 24th through the 28th? Yeah, you're out of town that whole week? I am. Any other conflicts that anybody knows of that week? I know, uh, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, I wouldn't do Friday nights in the fall. No. That's what, don't really want to do Saturdays either because Georgia plays. Exactly. And some, some team from Tuscaloosa that I, I, I don't mention their name. About about. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do two in the month of October. I think that's subject to the Civic Center being available. Right. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. One of the, that's one of the conflicts with this is because I'm going to have yeah. to, whenever we get done with this, I like if we get a couple of dates. I say we'll get four dates, have an alternate date. There we go. And then we'll publish that. Why do we have to have it here? Could we not do it at the Ag Center? It decl well, that way we get more people. Well, the Ag Center would, Ag would be it. Oh, is that, I've never yeah. been, so I don't know. Right. Yeah. We, yeah. we could be outside the Ag Center. Okay. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, really? Was, okay. If I can make a request on that last week about Toby you were talking about it, do it on Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to get out of town the second half of that week. I'd love to cover it. I'd right. Love to see it. We'll I'd like to have a different day, too, myself. So, Anybody opposed to Tuesday, the 25th? The 25th. Yeah. Let's go with it. I suggest you go from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock on that. All right, October 25th, 2022, 7 p.m. And I may actually see if I can get the Ag Center for that and just have a different location. They got a kitchen, too. Somebody might want to cook us something. I wasn't aware of that. Orange Jerry cook it up. Uh. <clears throat> She'd get it all from Bojang. <laughs> so it's 7 p.m. You right? know, we're, we're live. She's going to hear that. Make sure she... She knows who said that, man. All right. All right, then November, we just need to make sure uh, November 8th is election day. Is that correct? No, no, so we want to avoid that. And then really any time leading up to that, maybe later on uh, the week of the 14th through the 18th. Do y'all really feel like a Saturday morning meeting would, would get people here? In the evenings. In the evenings. Yeah. But in the, in the interest of getting additional input, I think you probably need to do it on the Yeah. Maybe if they don't schedule the third one. Yeah. This year, and after our first yeah. 11th meeting, ask if that is a large group. Right. That might be a good idea. Say that again. I'm sorry. I missed part of that. I, I, on your first meeting on October the 11th. Right. The 13th. I'm sorry. Yeah. Any of the board have any input on a Saturday morning meeting? Um, the only the only input I have is just having that time to be able to put notice out there for legally, so we have at least those those weeks before. Right. I mean, it's really more like I think it's like four days. I believe it's detailed in there. At least we have notice before then. So uh, if we could do something, as long as we do it, we're respecting that. And we can put notice if we can get these on hard. Like I, I can't get with Cindy right now yeah. and say, hey, is this the because she's gone, but. Uh, like tomorrow when I do bring these before her and then she gives me any kind of, you know, oh, we can't do it on the, uh, the, the last day because she has another meeting at 7 o'clock or something like that, then we may have to move it, but it, it'll probably be around that time, any of the ones that we choose. So if we do choose a Saturday meeting, if she says, well, I got a conflict, I may have to push it to Monday or something like that. Or try the Ag Center. Or, or try the Ag Center in that respect. So I have never, I didn't know that was available. So that's, that's oh, great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, but yes, I, I mean, that's the only thing I say, just so we can have that notice from the things so we can put it in the paper and all that stuff. What about, what about November 3rd for the third meeting? Because uh, going back to what was read, uh, we need to have everything worked out before the first of the year so we don't rush ourselves because when you get into Thanksgiving and that Christmas season there, it's hard to get people together. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say after we have our three public forum meetings where it's going to be more of an open forum discussion, then we're going to have to take some time and, and compile that and then come back and do a, a fourth meeting to come in and actually vote on the recommendations we're going to pass forward to the uh, commissioner. Did you raise your hand? Oh, okay. I, I, well, I had mine. I, oh. I suggested November 3rd. Yeah. To get uh, that's uh, November 3rd is on a Thursday. Yeah. How long away is it from that other? It's two weeks. Well, no, it's, it's, a, it's a week later. Yeah. It's a week later. Yeah, okay. We, I mean, yeah. as long as we Nine days, got yeah. it in there. Yeah. If we, if we, yeah, we, we, we can there. advertise these all now because I, think I just don't. I just don't want to get 45 days. It's got to got advertised within a 45 day window, I think. And that, yeah, that's the maximum. Or, yeah, the maximum. Yeah. So yeah. By, by next Thursday, those are, those are all going to fall in. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, if we, if we had to change, well, I just want to make sure we have And we'll problem. probably, we'll publicize that you know, several times just going down the pipe. Indeed. All right. Six o'clock or seven o'clock on the third? Seven. 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 I prefer seven as much as we can. Okay. I don't know what the 45-day shower talking about. I'm just, I don't know why we're, we're 
that that's we, we have to advertise any public meeting in our legal organ within a time frame time frame and the maximum days amount is 45. we can't say we're going to have the meeting next year and not advertise it no more than half it. are you saying 425 or 45 45 45 okay. days yeah i hear it sounds like you're saying 425 45 mm -hmm. yeah just like the director said we can't we can't schedule a meeting for next year right. six o'clock on a tuesday in march and then you know hope that and people not show up and know what we're talking about so i guess no conflict on that. Yes, sir. It just occurred to me, and I would suggest that the commission consider giving like a, a mid a midpoint review at one of these meetings about potential amendments that you're considering, ones that that you're considering positively, explaining why other things may not be considered as official amendments that. Reiterate what Lee mentioned earlier. I think maybe, for instance, on the first meeting on the 13th, we kind of focus on the subdivision section, the first two or three chapters, four chapters of the book. And then maybe the second meeting, focus more on the commercial side of it. And then the third meeting would be kind of a, a follow up and, you know, you know, do some housekeeping on the whole thing again that we hadn't got cleared up at that point. That way we can kind of stay focused right here and just work, work on this specific part of it. And, you know, that, we'll probably put that out in the uh, in in the notice in the papers. What we're going to focus on that night, so that hopefully we can stay on track. But does that mean if a person something happens and they couldn't make that first meeting and they didn't get, they had something they wanted to talk about that section? Does that mean that we we can't go back then? No. I mean, what we would like to as much as possible, but you no, know, we want to as long as we can keep moving forward and be productive. That's what we want to do. You know, if we just sit here and spin our wheels for three hours and don't really get, really get accomplished, much accomplished, you know, that, I just want to try to steer away from that. But, yeah, you know, like I said earlier, we want everybody to have opportunity to speak. But if, if we can kind of prepare for that, you know, we're giving plenty of time ahead of time. Obviously, some folks have already got plans made they can't change at this point. But we, we will try to accommodate as many people as we possibly can to speak. Are you looking to incorporate technology like Zoom? I know the city is some for just posting the Zoom link for one of their new meetings. That would be a BJ question, yes. Well, we'll, we will be doing that for that. Yeah. I mean, depending on whether, I mean, we had it on the first one and nobody really got the link. Hopefully, people will go to the county website and see that link and go to it. I will have it available, though. So, whether anybody uses it, we'll see. I know it's not to be about trying to have at least one Saturday. I think that's something that, you know, everybody needs to look at calendars and plans ahead. And right, right. Right. That's something we can we can advertise at a later date and have a, that fourth meeting on a Saturday morning. Yeah, we'll discuss it on one of the other ones. One of these other meetings, Probably yeah. The third one. It, it would be toward the end of the line anyway. One of the things, going back to the reviewing the sections, the last meeting we had, the, the first public meeting we had, there were a number of questions that were raised, like, it just wasn't clear on uh, descendancy, heirs, property, dividing. People were confused about that and thought that might be uh, under this ordinance. So in thinking about sections to review, we collected a lot of good information in that first meeting that gave us some things that clearly are excluded. Like agriculture, for the most part, is excluded. And so I'd like to just maybe because we did collect so many good ideas in that one, the first time we're coming together, we at least get those things that can be clarified and pushed out of this ordinance. There's, there's two sections, two sections in this ordinance that deal with scope. There's one on scope, 
And there's another section on exclusions. And I think the exclusions are dealing with subdivisions, if I'm not mistaken. But, but we need to get clear on that because last month we heard that. that there was a lot of angst about farm property. Most of us have farm property. We need to get clear on when does it become development and when is it not developed. And so uh, if we can get those nailed down, I think that'd be a good thing just to clear the deck so that we're focused on subdivisions and commercial. And I know commercial can take a lot of different, like your question. Well, Mr. Winston, that kind of builds on what I was going to present to y'all tonight. Um, that is a recommendation for better defining the term of subdivision. And right now the term subdivision is any division of a tract of land. I mean, that, that's not just commercial development or residential development. That's any time you can buy a piece of property. Yeah, and so that, what I did there, there is um, a definition that better defines subdivision that more closely resembles what mm -hmm. the commissioner and everybody are talking about. So I, I request that you take a look at that. That's how the Georgia Department of Health. That's helpful. Yeah. And uh, that, that would probably eliminate 70% of people's concerns with this order. Okay. There's a lot more work that needs to be done other than that, but if that could be done quickly, then that that would help a lot. That, that would that would get things moving in the right direction. I guess this is meant for each of us to have one. Yeah, I just bring off the top page for everybody, and then uh, I included a copy of the uh, or a partial copy of the regulation of the Georgia Department of Health on that one. Talk to the municipalities that own sewer systems about that. Well, Stupid that's, County doesn't have any sewer systems. Exactly. So right. that's why I thought that we never had the issue of having, say, this multiplex or even a multi family unit being built out in residential lands. That's why I didn't know. I still don't understand if I'm concerned about that or if I shouldn't be. There are some areas of the unincorporated uh, parts of the county that do have sewer. Pretty much between Somerville and Trine, and they have sewer that serves the prison all the way up to, to Walmart. Okay. So, but your your point right. on sewer and septic is extremely important. Right. It would have actually stopped if we could have done something with that development that came in from Atlanta. That was the biggest concern. How are, how are you going to service these hundred units? Well, and I thought so. That's, well, really that's right. It was. To us, that would never even been a question that that would get, get off the ground. Well, there's a lot of money changing hands in that process. $10, $20 million to build a facility to support the way. Right. So there's yeah, no that's, way they could have done it right. if they wanted to. Right. But my understanding is this ordinance wouldn't have done anything to prevent that because they never applied to the five property. That, that piece of property that they've got over there off Garden Road is off in one chunk right now. It's still in the previous owner's name. They never applied to split. But they were, they they were no promoting it with separate lots. And selling it separate lots. And, and no titles, that's no deeds, <laughs> a lot of weird stuff. But it, it would have allowed, it would have allowed at least a gateway. To, here is, here's an ordinance. Is it subject to the ordinance or is it not? It puts the questions out there, and that entitles BJ to go talk to them and see what are we doing here? Does this work or does it not work? Does it or does it not? Does it or does it not? Does it or does it not? They never, they never applied. Yeah. They, so they, now still, does this order 
stop that from happening. It, it, let me ask that. it may not have stopped it, but it would have regulated it to where they would have had to comply with this to subdivide and develop that subdivision. Or they would have been penalized. Uh, right. No, exactly. well, they, 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 would have, they would have stopped. Huh? Regulation, not manual, stop. Which is but if they, if, but if they did not comply with the ordinance, then the mechanism would be to take them to court and get a court order right. for them to stop, to stop development. And then, then the judge can put them in jail if they don't comply with that court order. That's that's the mechanism in that direction, in that in that specific case. Yeah, they made everything in this ordinance. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the purpose of this ordinance. Is so it really doesn't even serve the purpose it was intended for. With the ordinance, the county would have the right to go to these two parties that were contracting, I don't know how many contracts got done, to sell these lots and ask questions. Without the ordinance, there was they had no authority. No authority to go get in front of the buyer and the seller and say, what's going on here? At least that's the way I understood it from Jason and then Blake. I mean, I went through two commissioners with this angst over what in the world is going on over here. Well, now, Jason, if I remember right, did do a Facebook post back during the election. He listed a laundry list of regulations and that here's here's what would have here's what would have all to to uh, Rick's point the water and sewer would have ultimately stopped it but not before a lot of trees had been cut dirt had been graded because there wasn't anything to stop it until they started putting units in well, That's what Jason was saying. I thought that was the I'm not trying to put, yeah, I'm not trying to put words in the well, time. Let's get away from the what ifs and let's let's do something positive here. We're chasing rabbits that's you know this gone, you know. Another hunter's done got them. So let's be positive. So our day is set. Are we set our day is set? All we gotta do is vote on it. We hadn't done that yet, but that's well, we uh, we had what we was gonna do for, right? We're well we're gonna we're gonna, we're we're gonna wait on one wait one on the, the fourth date later to try to see if we can do a Saturday date. Right. Ask it. right. And then as a community, what do we need to do to be prepared to come to that meeting and make it productive? Come with specific questions and suggestions. It, like I said, if you've got them in writing, it would be more helpful. Because if we're just sitting here having a discussion right here, we haven't changed a thing in the ordinance tonight. We've been here six hundred we've been here nearly an hour to pick three days because we're chasing a bunch of rabbits. I'm, at these public meetings, I want to give everybody an opportunity to speak, but I want us to stay focused and on track and, and discuss what we want to, and that's changing the ordinance. So are you that's, going to scope it down to different sections for different days? I, I think that's my goal, yes. I want to deal specifically with the subdivision half on the first meeting, the commercial developments on the second meeting, third meeting as a catch-all to get everything. Possibly, and possibly a fourth meeting as needed, as, as needed, yeah. Okay. yeah. And it, it, it may wind up having to be a fifth meeting. Who knows the time it's all said and done. But we, you know, we, one thing we don't want it to be said is the public has not had ample opportunity to know about it and to have input on it. Well, if we're, if but, said, I promise I will help spread the word. Yeah. Well, as soon as I can schedule them tomorrow, yeah. As soon as I get with her and she can check the schedule and everything, I will have them posted on chatugacounty.org like as soon as she tells me what they are. If they, she can confirm all three of those, it's great. But if there's one that's moved, we'll try to keep it at the 7 o'clock situation away from Wednesday, Wednesdays and Sundays. And if it happen, if she had, we have to do it on Saturday before, you know, on one of those meetings or something like that. It won't be the first one. Actually, BJ, if possible, let's try to schedule one of them at the Just just to do it, just to have have okay. one tax. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll number one, there's a lot more parking. I, I wasn't even aware I could do that. That's great. Right.
not, not near as noisy. Yeah. yeah. All right, folks. I hope this is productive. I hope it helps, folks. And now, let me let me say this: we all are going to have ideas and things that, that we want, but at the end of the day, everybody's not going to get everything passed that they want. That's just not going to happen. It's, it's, it's just not the way life works, you know. But we're going to listen to the public. We're going to listen to the public. What we, we what we want to do is things that have, have a document that helps everybody, not helps one person. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're thinking through this and you're talking about it. The ordinance is going to be here. It's here and it's going to stay. Let's just make it the best we possibly can for everybody. Okay, that's that's what I think our goal is. Yes, absolutely. We have to. But before I before I can, we we can't vote outside the meeting on anything. Right, Ben? Yeah. There you go. All right. First off, first order of business. We've got a resolution here. Is everybody happy with it as it's worded at this table? Yes. Yeah. If so, I need a motion uh, to approve this resolution to deliver to the commissioner stated. I'll got second. a motion from Gray Winstead. I'll second. You taking that? Got I'll a second. Se got a second from Lee Hamby. All right. Any further discussion from the board on this resolution? If not. All in favor of passing this resolution, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. You passed unanimously. Okay. Ne next order of business is to schedule our meetings. Right now we have uh, October 13th at 6 o'clock, October 25th at 7 o'clock, November 3rd at 7 o'clock. These are all in 2022 uh, at the Civic Center with possibly one uh, at the Ag Building based on availability. Uh, I hear a motion to pass that. I motion. I'll uh, second. BJ, I don't think you can make a motion. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Is that the director? <laughs> yeah. Hear that. Yeah. You're not on the board. Yeah. We got a motion from Myra. Got a second. I'll second. Got a second from Greg Winstead. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Those meetings are scheduled. They'll be public. Thank you all for your input. Some of you got my phone number. If you don't. Get it from somebody else. I'll be glad to talk to you anytime that I can. Keep in mind, I work myself, and like I said, I'm leaving here going to Rome. Oh, absolutely. Well, you're going to need. Hello, 